In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to create a simple subdivision of lots along an existing right-of-way using the program LotNet. As you can see, I prefer to use the ribbons. Since I'm often hitting several of these commands, I like using the ribbon and the area layout tab and in the panel here, Lot Network. If you prefer to use pull downs under the area layout, you will see a section for all the lot net commands. What I have to start with is just a simple polyline that is closed and represents the boundary of the property. What I need in addition to that is a polyline along the front of the property that represents the street line or the right of way. To do that, I am going to draw a polyline exactly along the front of the property. Before I start, I will set to a layer that I've created called right of way. I then go into the draw command and use the 2D polyline. I accept the option to use current drawing properties, which means it will draw on the property that I happen to be set to. And I hit OK. What's unique about this command, though, is not only can you draw lines and arcs, but you can use the option follow, which I will take F for follow. And it asks me to select the polyline to follow, which is this one. It then prompts me to pick the first point to follow. So I will snap to the end point of the beginning of the right of way line. I'm going to say no to following the vertice elevations because this is a two dimensional plan only. And the last point to follow, which is the end of the property, and it quickly draws a polyline that mimics exactly the property line that I had in the front. I now go into the lot network settings. Again, I'm using ribbons that would be found right here, lot network settings. And we create a .ltn file. I'm going to name it simple division .ltn. Within this dialog box are the controls for how Lots will be created and annotated. I'm going to keep the option, Automatic Label Updates. So if I make a change to a lot line, it will update the labels automatically. A lot line, layer, boundary-lots is acceptable. I'm not going to label lines and arcs at this point. I'm going to come back and do that. I do, however, want to label the areas. Now, under the building placement setbacks, which are set to the default, I'm going to hit the Edit button, which is where my setback parameters are located. The front setback, I'll leave at 20 feet, side setback at 10, and the rear setback, I'm going to change that to 20 as well. And the setback lines will be drawn on the boundary dash setbacks layer. And I hit OK. And OK. That is the extent of the settings I'm going to put on this at this time. I then select the set boundary command and select the closed perimeter polyline that represents the boundary and hit enter. Then there is another selection, add right of way polyline. I execute that command and select the right of way polyline that I had just drawn. Now, by using the option subdivide area, I am prompted to pick inside area to subdivide, which is anywhere within the perimeter. A dialog box appears that contains the options for controlling the lot parameters themselves. I'm going to set the lot size to 30,000 square feet, the minimum frontage at 100 feet, the minimum lot depth, which helps control the lot shape at the frontage to 50 feet. The maximum lot depth I have at 500 feet, which will ensure that all lot lines will extend to the rear of the property. This particular parameter is useful when creating open space parcels along the rear of the lots. For the lot edge method, I have selected perpendicular to the right of way, and I would like any remaining area 
to be added to the last lot created. Note also that there are lot types that can be created and saved for standardizing lot creation. I click OK and the command prompts me to pick end of frontage to start lots. So I'm going to pick a point near the right side of the property so it will create lots from a right to left direction, putting the remainder on the left side of the property. The program then creates lots with a frontage of 100 feet and a minimum area of 30,000 square feet. It draws all setback lines and annotates the lot numbers and areas. Let's now take a look at modifying some of these lot lines. There are several options to add a lot edge or to remove a lot edge, to add lot edge point if you'd like to introduce an angle point, remove a lot edge point if you'd like to remove an angle point, and move a lot edge point. So for example, I'd like to make lot 9 a bit larger and get rid of that triangular shaped parcel and more similar to the rest of the lots. So I'm going to use move lot edge point. I pick the line, any point nearest that lot corner, and then I'm going to, using my O snaps, snap to the end point, the back of lot 9 and 10, and hit enter. It updates both lot 9 and 10 with new areas. Note that it draws the setback lines automatically. If I would like to be more specific, say lot 7, I would like to reduce the size of that to exactly a 60,000 square foot lot. I can use other options. The hinged area or sliding area command are very useful for this. I'm going to use hinged area so it doesn't alter the frontage. Pick inside the lot 7 to identify which lot to adjust and select the lot line to adjust. Target area 60,000 and it rotates the left lot line to create exactly a 60,000 square foot lot for lot 7. Now for another example I'm going to create a strip of land, we'll call it open space, along the rear of lots 1 through 4. To do that, I'm first going to set to the lot line layer by using my set layer by pick command. Pick that lot line. I'm now set to the boundary lots layer. And I'm just going to draw a simple 2D polyline, picking nearest, approximately here, and approximately there on lot 4. I am then just going to use the regular trim command under edit, trim, select my cutting edge, and select these three lot lines. Now these three lot lines already exist in the lot network. They've just now been modified. This new line that I drew, however, does not exist. So I am going to go and use add lot edge, select that line, and hit enter. I now have a parcel of land created in the back. You can see it's not a lot because it has no frontage. But it updated lots 1 through 4 accordingly. If I would like to remove that parcel, I can again simply use AutoCAD commands or remove a lot edge. Extend three, three lot lines back to the end, and then, after making several changes, update lot network labels. Now you can see the operation that I've performed here now has reordered the lot numbers because of the sequence that I performed that with, and I would like to renumber those back from lot 1 to lot 10, right to left. So there is an option to renumber lots. I select renumber lot. I am prompted for the starting lot name, which is one. I just pick a point anywhere in that lot, drag over to the left, pick another point, and hit enter. 
and the lots are renumbered consecutively, 1 through 10, from right to left. So let's now go ahead and annotate all these lots with bearings, distances, and arc information. So we go back into the lot network settings and turn on label lines and arcs. Now if we just go ahead and label it now, we will be using the default settings, which means whatever the annotation defaults are set at currently will be used when you label the bearings and distances. So if I'd like to control that a little bit more, I can hit edit and change my settings here. For example, I would like my angle above the distance. So I'm going to put distance below and you can see the angle and distance in the illustration box changing. So I'll leave the angle formatted bearings. But an important feature is combine common angles. It's set to off. I'd like to turn that on series. So any angles that are in series, which for example, both the rear of the property lines are exactly that situation where I would like an overall bearing and distance along the property line and then just distances between each lot line as it intersects the rear property line. The same with the frontage. So I set common angles to series and set the angle to be placed on the opposite side. So the combined common angle will be on the opposite side of the distances. I would also like a total distance. So again, I get the total length of the property line. I am not going to apply settings by layer, which is an option covered in another video. Set my arc information to A equals, R equals for radius, and the delta. I would also like to combine common radii. Again, the common radius will be placed on the opposite side of the curve as the other information. I'm not using curve tables. Once the settings have been made in the way I like them, it is a very good idea to save those settings for future use. So I hit save and I'm going to create an AAN file with the name LotNet and I hit save. I can now hit OK. The general label settings as well. I'm going to edit those. Now these settings control the text size, the choice of whether or not you want crow's feet, which are called leaders to endpoints on lines and arcs, with various settings, including the layer that the crow's foot will be placed upon, the layer for the angle, and the layer for distance, and a variety of other options, which can all be set, and again, saved for future use. I'm going to call these general annotations and save. So now that I have my settings the way I would like them, I can hit OK. And again, I will use the option to update lot network label. Bearings and distances are labeled in the manner that I prefer. There are tools now to clean up areas, for example, this 1.75 foot angle point under annotate, annotate with leader, and move label with leader, I can select that annotation, pull it out, and I get an, a leader with the annotation attached. So there is just a simple use of a lot net command in subdividing land. And remember, this could be used just to divide a single parcel into two pieces. The only requirement is a closed boundary and a right-of-way line for this program to work.